In this video, we're going to talk about sets. So introduction to sets. And we'll start from the very, very beginning. So let's start with the very definition of a set. So a set is simply a collection of objects. So a set is a collection of objects. The notation we use uh, for sets is usually capital letters. So notation. So maybe something like capital A or capital B. Uh, sometimes we use like capital X. Whenever it's an X, I like to put little lines like this. So it's read like cap X or capital Y, etc. So usually capital letters are used to indicate uh, the actual set. The objects and the set have names. So the objects are usually called elements, so are called elements. Or sometimes they're called uh, members. Typically, um, the notation we use uh, for the elements or the members um, is lowercase letters. So for example, instead of capital A, we'll use a lowercase a. Instead of capital B, we use lowercase b, and a little x, and little y, etc. So typically, lowercase letters for the elements or members of a set, and then capital letters to actually uh, denote um, the set. There is some more notation that is absolutely necessary in the understanding of sets. If we write x and we write this funny looking e symbol, then we write a, this means x is an element of a. That's how you read it. So x is an element of a. You can also read it as x is in a. That's typically what I say in my mind. It's shorter to say uh, x belongs to A, x is a member of A, x is an element of A, etc. If we write x and we do this little symbol like this, and we put a line through it, this means x is not an element of A. Not an element. of A. So X is not an A, X does not belong to A, X is not a member of A. Okay, let's keep going. So two sets are equal if they have the same elements. Okay, so, so two sets are equal, this is very important, if they have the same elements. So if they have the same elements, same elements. Maybe let's do a, a quick example um, so you see here. So we have an example here. Um, here we have the set um, A equals uh, 1, 2, 3. And then here we have the set, uh, let's see, B. And this will be 1, 2, 2, 3. So it turns out that these sets have the same elements. Okay, so you might say, well, this, this set here, B, has the two twice. It doesn't matter. When we talk about sets, we're really talking about what elements are in this set. We talk about membership. So A here contains the numbers 1, 2, and 3. B here contains the numbers 1, 2, and 2. Oh, wait, we already said it contains 2. So it doesn't need to be said twice. So it contains 1, 2, and 3. So these sets are in fact equal. So how many times you write uh, the element in, in the set uh, does not matter. If I write A equals uh, 1, that's the set containing 1. This is the same as the set containing 1 and the set containing 1 and the set containing 1. I just said it contains 1 three times. Completely ridiculous. It only needs to be said one time. So repetition does not matter uh, when you're writing uh, sets. By the way, when they're equal, we write A equals B. Right? And if they're not equal, so not equal, 
we would write A not equal to B. So if they don't have the same elements, we would say A is not equal to B. Um, let's do another example. Say we have um, the set A equals, mm, how about 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. So that's one way to list the elements of a set. That's the only way we've seen so far in this video, right? You just list the numbers. Another way to list the elements of the set is as follows. You can read this as B is equal to the set of all X such that, so the line means such that, so the set of all X such that, let's see, X is between 0 and 10, and X is odd, so it's an odd integer. Okay, it's an odd integer. So what are all the odd numbers between 0 and 10? Well, that would be 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Oh, look at that. A is equal to B. So two ways to write uh, the same set, right? This is called this is called set builder notation. Set builder notation. So all the elements of B have to satisfy this property. So B is the set of all X such that, ST means such that, uh, X has to satisfy this property. So if this property that I'm boxing in here is satisfied, then X is an element of B. So these are the numbers that satisfy that property, therefore A is equal to B. Let's talk about some common sets, common sets. And it's a long video, but as I promise, we're going to go through a big portion of the theory of sets. Why not? Let's do it. So common sets. I don't know why I called it an example. <laughs> so common sets. So one of the common sets is the set of natural numbers. It looks like this. It's like a funny looking N. Okay. This is the set containing all of the positive integers. So whole numbers that are positive like this. The three dots indicate that it goes on forever. So it's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so on. Some people allow 0 to be a natural number. Most people don't. So we'll stick with 1 being the smallest natural number. Then you have this funny Z. Uh, this is the set of all integers. So this is dot, 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 negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, dot, dot, dot. I believe the word, the letter Z is used because of the German word Salen. I think it's Salen. And I think Salen means, uh, Salen, if I'm saying it right, means numbers in German, I believe. Then we have Q. This is all of the rational numbers. So this is the set of all elements of the form A over B. So integer over integer such that a and b are elements of the integers, and then b is not equal to 0. So it's all the fractions of integers, right? So for example, uh, 2 over 3 would be a rational number. So 2 over 3 is in the, uh, in the set q. Uh, 4 can be written as 4 over 1, so that's also in the set q. So q is the set of rational numbers. So natural numbers, integers, rational numbers. Then we have the real numbers. We have the real numbers. This is all real numbers. So all real numbers. If you're familiar with interval notation, this is the set negative infinity to infinity. So if you've taken uh, a math class, you might have seen that notation. It means all real numbers. Um, and then we have uh, the C with a line through it. This is the complex numbers. These are numbers of the form A plus BI, such that A and B are real numbers. So, and, and in this set, i is, is fixed at the outset. i is defined to be the square root of negative 1. So, for example, um, 2 plus 7i would be a complex number. 3 is a complex number because you can write it as 3 plus 0i. So, every real number is a complex number. 5 is a complex number because it's 5 plus 0i etc. 2i is a complex number because it's 0 plus 2i. So if it can be written as a plus bi, it's a complex number. Uh, and we get this beautiful inclusion from all of this, right? We have that the natural numbers, oh, I haven't talked about this. This symbol means subset. I'll explain this in a minute. So every natural number is also an integer, which is also a um, rational number, which is also a real number, which is also a complex number. Yeah, I forgot to tell you what this symbol means. Um, this is the subset symbol. So this is red subset. Okay, and uh, we say A is a subset, okay, subset of B, 
if every element in A is also in B. So if every element in A is also in B. So, and the symbol we use for subset is this one. So we're saying that the natural numbers are a subset of the integers. So every natural number is an integer, which makes sense. All of these guys up here are also in here. Then every integer is also a rational number. Every rational number is a real number, and every real number is a complex number. Let's keep going. It's been 10 minutes, but who cares? Um, let's just go ahead and go through uh, uh, as much of the theory of sets as uh, I can handle. <laughs> so let's talk about the universal set. Universal set. Say, what is that? What's the universe? So whenever you're talking about sets, all elements of all sets belong to something called the universal set. So in any application, so in any application, okay, in any application, uh, the members, I'll say the elements of all sets that you're talking about. So the elements of all sets uh, belong to the universal set. So belong to the universal set. And the symbol we typically use, that you typically see for the universal set, is the letter U. So it's a big U. So U is typically your universal set. This is your universal set. Universal set. Some people say that they belong to the universe of discourse. That's another fancy way of saying it. I just like to say uh, everything belongs to the universal set. Let's look at some examples. Like say you're talking about people. So say like your sets have people in them. Then in this case, U would be all people. Okay, all people. Or let's say that um, you're discussing integers, right? So let's say you're dealing with like subsets of integers, like we were in the previous example. Uh, let me scroll up so you can see. Up here, way up here, we were talking about integers, right? We had one, three, five, seven, nine. So in this example here, u would be all integers. So we could do this as like that. That's how pros do it. So the universe of discourse would be the set of integers in this example. So if you were talking about integers, uh, u is is all integers. Typically, when you're talking about like the domains of functions in calculus, the universe of discourse is all real numbers, etc. So everything has to belong to something, and we call that the universe of uh, discourse. Let's look at an example, and this example will introduce uh, an important concept uh, in the theory of sets. So let's say we have a set A, and that's equal to the set of all x, such that x squared is equal to negative 2 and x is a real number. So let's think about this. So this is the set of all the elements, x, such that if you square x, you get negative 2, and x is a real number. So the question is, what, what is a? Well, if you try to solve this equation, x squared equals negative 2, what you do is you take the square root of both sides, right? And so when you do that, you do get a plus or minus, because whenever you take the square root of a variable squared, um, you do get a plus or minus. So you get plus or minus square root of negative 2. And if you remember from like math, this is i square root of 2. So this is not a real number, right? This is not a real number. So it's not in the set of real numbers. So the solutions to this equation are not in the set of real numbers. So there is no value of x that satisfies both of these conditions, right? There's an and here. So that means that both conditions have to be satisfied, this one and this one. That's impossible. So what's in this set? Well, nothing is in this set, right? This is called the empty set. So this is called the empty set. And the notation we use for that is a line, a circle with a slash through it. So it's the set uh, with nothing in it. It turns out that for any set A, we always have that the empty set is contained in A. So if you're still watching this video and you're curious as to why, um, check out my playlist on set theory. Um, I have a video that actually proves this. So the empty set is contained in every uh, in every set. Um, let's keep going. Let's talk a little bit more about subsets. So we kind of talked about it earlier, and I kind of cheated because I used it before defining it. So we know what it is. A is a subset of B. So A 
is a subset of B if all of the elements in A are also in B. So that's a symbol we use for subset. Uh, sometimes we can use uh, this symbol here, A subset B. Okay, we can use that sometimes. And we already talked about how the empty set is a subset of every set. So just another recap there. Um, sometimes we write something like this. We say A subset, and we put a not equal to sign like this. So this is A is a proper subset of B. So this means A is a proper subset of B. Proper subset of B. So what is a proper subset? Well, a proper subset is a set. It's a subset, but it's not equal to the whole set. So, so proper subsets. If you have these two conditions, if it's a subset but it's not the whole set, um, it's a proper subset. Okay. Uh, we'll come back to that in a minute. And just a really important fact before we go further. Uh, two sets are equal. Well, if they have the same elements. Well, what does that mean? That's equivalent. This arrow means equivalent to saying that every element in A is also in B, so A is a subset of B, and every element of B is also in A, so B is a subset of A. So A is equal to B if A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A. You can read this backwards. You can say B contains A, or A contains B. Right? You can write it backwards too. A contains B. So A contains B. It can be written backwards as well. Let's look at an example so you get some, um, some concrete knowledge on subsets. Say we have A equals 1, 2, 3, just a really simple example, and then B equals uh, 1, 2. So in this case, B is a subset of A, right? Every element in B is also in A. Notice that B is not equal to A because they don't have the same elements. So therefore, B is a proper subset of A, right? It, this is optional, right? You can just say this and that's good enough. So which one do you use? Typically just this. Unless there's some reason that you need it to be a proper subset, um, it's not really um, a good idea to mention it. Just just say B is a subset of A uh, for all practical purposes. All right, let's keep going. Um, let's talk a little bit about um, Venn diagrams. So Venn diagrams. Venn diagrams. Actually, maybe, maybe we'll talk about uh, Venn diagrams in the next video. This has reached 17 minutes, and I think I'm almost out of room. So, um, so in the next video, we'll pick up with Venn diagrams. That's it.